Utah politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go inside Utah politics. We do begin this morning with Jennifer Yim. She is the executive director of the Judicial Performance Evaluation Commission. Jennifer, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to shorten up this name and just call it JPEC for sounds the like, purposes of this yes. uh, conversation. Uh, first off, explain exactly what JPEC is. JPEC is a s independent mm -hmm. state government um, evaluation commission designed to help voters have the information that they need to cast informed ballots in November. Uh, hard to know uh, how to vote on judges because thankfully most of us aren't in court. Mm -hmm. And so gives some comparisons and gives some sense of, of how they do on a number of different factors. Yeah, I think we all uh, go through the ballot, get to those judges and then say what, who, why? Uh, because unless there's really something controversial involving that judge, you just don't really hear much about them. It's true, and the system is, you know, intentionally designed so that it's based on merit and not partisanship or campaign dollars or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, issues. But we want people to be able to have the information that they need to cast informed votes so that they can be the check on our system. Uh, JPEC, made up, as you mentioned, of commissioners. Talk about first who they are. Who are these commissioners that okay. make up this commission? They're a diverse group of Utahns who volunteer their time to evaluate the performance of judges. They're appointed by the branches of th separate branches of government um, and come together. There, some of half, about half of them are lawyers. Uh, there's partisan balance, um, although we're not a partisan process. Uh, and they spend an incredible amount of time learning about our judiciary and helping to make um, informed decisions. Mm -hmm. How do they go about doing that? How do they come up with their assessments? So <coughs> as staff to the commission, um, I coordinate a process of surveying people with experience in courts across the state, as well as sending anonymous courtroom observers into courts to watch what would they do, and then of course we collect metrics. Talk about the criteria by which the judges are graded based on this. Yes, so process. we look at their legal skills, of course. We mm -hmm. also look at, um, in especially helpful in the area of co era of COVID, look at their administrative skills, so their ability to handle the technology. We look at how they treat people in court, something we call procedural fairness, and we look at their integrity and their judicial temperament. Okay, and then all these things go into this report that the commission does what with? They take a look at the performance of every judge mm -hmm in the state and they make recommendations about how a judge does with each other in the end casting votes to determine whether the judge passes minimum performance standards um, or fails to pass them. And this is a little different than in years past. I've, I've had you on the show quite a bit to talk about this when the election rolls around and it used to be that your commission would basically straight up yes or no recommend retaining a certain judge, but it's different. Talk about how it's different. You've already mentioned a little bit, but go a little deeper, and why the change? This last legislative session, JPEC and the Utah legislature um, talked about this process, and what we decided was it was really important for voters to be making these decisions. We wanted voters to have the information that they need, but we didn't want to presume that voters should cast votes in the way that the commission felt like it should or, any th or the opposite. Mm -hmm. We want them to make up their own minds. So as government, it's our job to provide the information, independent, nonpartisan information, and then let the voters make choices. I went to the website just to take a look at how it works, uh, pulled up just Salt Lake County to, to try to get a feel for how it looks and, and the information that's displayed there. Uh, the percentage was a big part of that, but explain what that means, because I saw percentages anywhere from, say, 60 to 90 percent. So explain what that means and what is a typical percentage, and if it falls below that, how should viewers uh, or uh, voters assess that? That's a great question. We do surveys of all kinds of different folks who are before judges. And we look at their sense of whether or not a judge should be retained in their view. Mm -hmm. 
And then we look at those averages, and for most levels of court, uh, that average percent recommending retention is usually around mm, 88, okay. 90 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, someone who gets 60 percent of survey respondents recommending retention, it's a pretty significant difference. And that might suggest to voters that they want to take extra care. The commission may still find that they meet minimum performance standards, or, but in the end, the information mm -hmm. is there for voters to make up their And minds. it could be a number of reasons, as you've already mentioned, based on the criteria as to why a judge might get a lower score. Absolutely. It could be, <coughs> it's, it, it's the sort of end point question in our survey. Mm -hmm. And so given all of the ways they rate the judge on all the different metrics, in the end, we ask them, so do you think this judge should be retained mm -hmm. and why? Okay. Uh, if I remember right, there are 13 commissioners? Correct. Okay. So basically that percentage is based on the 13 commissioners and how they recommend as far as retention goes. Is that correct? The or percent not? recommending retention is actually not the commissioners. We're giving the voters a sense of how the people we surveyed felt. Mm. So you have mm -hmm. two sort of mm -hmm. measures. You have the vote of the commission, okay. and then you have the percent of survey respondents recommending retention. So that's a, a combination of the two. Yep, so you have okay. both of those mm -hmm. on that first page that you ended up at. Okay, um, I've lived in several states, and to my knowledge, this is the only state that I've covered elections in where this service is provided. So talk about why in the state of Utah we go through this process to evaluate the judges. We're actually really lucky here in the state of Utah, and the more I do this, the more I recognize why that is. Mm -hmm. But in other states, as you may know, um, you would be very likely to see campaign signs and speeches made by judges who are running for a contested partisan election, and they collect money from donors. They make issue-based promises, and um, it's, you know, it's how might we feel if we were in court and we recognized that our attorney hadn't made a contribution to the judge, but the opposing attorney had made a contribution to the judge's campaign and then went on to win. I think that that dynamic, which we are able to keep out of the Utah judiciary mm -hmm. by focusing instead on merit instead of money, um, is a real plus. I imagine you have a chance to talk to judges about the process. What do you hear from them in general? Are they, do they like this? I guess it probably depends on the score ultimately, but what by and large do you hear from them? By and large, I think that judges appreciate the feedback that they get because they are interested in being the best judges that they can be. They take their jobs very seriously mm -hmm. and they have a lot of influence in our lives. So the fact that they can get honest, credible feedback from people um, who actually have experience with them in court makes a lot of difference to them, and they can use that to improve. All right, uh, last real quick, where can viewers go to find all this information on these assessments? Thank you, mm -hmm. it's at judges.utah.gov. Okay, very easy. I uh, appreciate your insight, and interesting that we have a change in the process this year. Uh, glad to have you here and explain that. Thanks so much. Thank you. Still to come, the U.S. Supreme Court is back in session.